Hey Mark, great to see you again. It's always a pleasure. Last time we did this, it was in New York in the 80s, but it was in print. Mm -hmm. Now here we are finally meeting each other in person. If you couldn't be an artist, what would you have done? I knew that I was an artist at age six because I made a lot of drawings starting around five, five and a half, and I got so much attention uh, and it felt good, uh, so I knew that that was going to be my career. My parents were both uh, Estonian immigrants and uh, they spoke with strong accents and my friends at school would, would find out about their accents and the, sometimes the less friendly friends would make fun of that. We were middle class, but there were moments of financial difficulty where we didn't have a car and we didn't have a television. I felt a little uh, bullied uh, because of my outsider status. The only thing that gave me uh, power was that people loved my drawings and, the, and I would draw sometimes for hours and I felt like my fingers had the power to control people's eyes and minds and then their wallets too because I was selling drawings as an elementary school student. So then I went to art school, but everyone said, you don't need to study anatomy. We're, we're doing conceptual art now. You don't need technique. You, you use your brain and ideas. So I said, well, that actually sounds like fun. So I dropped the anatomy and I developed the Kastabi figure. That gave me an artistic identity but I wasn't internationally famous. I was famous in the New York art world. Someone said that I needed some pizzazz. So another person said, Mark, why don't you change your hair color to be platinum? I did that and I went to an art opening and Andy Warhol was there and I had already met him a few times and he said, gee, Mark, you sure are more famous now that you're a blonde. In that respect, he was my mentor because especially in the late 80s, I would, uh, change my clothes, uh, I would change my hair color every day, and I would give interviews, and that made the mass media um, gravitate towards me, not just as an artist, but as a personality. Without a doubt, meeting Andy Warhol uh, every time I met him was uh, a big thrill. There was actually, there's one other person who, who I was equally starstruck meeting, the world's greatest chess player, Gary Kasparov. I love chess because it's creative and complex. To win at chess is very much like to win at life. There are a lot of uh, life lessons for me as an artist. Dealing with art dealers uh, is a lot like chess. Everyone makes a move. After you make one move, you have to do the next move. My parents were both musicians. My mother uh, was a uh, professional piano teacher, and my father made musical instruments as a profession. Art inspires music, and music inspires art, in, in, in my case, both ways. Always listening to music when I paint or draw. When I perform music, I see colors. I, I have synesthesia. Sometimes when I think when I'm playing, um, I don't even think, oh, now I've got to hit C. I, I think I've got to hit the green note. One of the many things I love about Rome is the sense of eternal discovery. One week is not enough here. One year is not enough. It, 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 I've been here now 24 years and I still discover new things all the time. Just, it's so magical to walk around, find the hidden streets and another beautiful corner with a great sculpture on the angle of a building. <laughs> 
living in Rome is like living in an open air museum. So Mark, is there anything else you'd like to add? Just lots of zeros to my prices.